Hey there! It's been about six months <laughs> since I um, made a video on this channel. And um, my reasons for that I'll go into more detail later, but just to you know, give a preview of that is to say that this is the way it's always been for me with audio. I, uh, I get hot for the topic and then I don't, you know, it's like up, down, almost like a square wave. Okay. So yeah, I, I took a six months break from doing audio stuff. Now I still did some things in the background, but nothing that I thought was worth um, making a video about other than what I did in this video right here, what I'm doing in this video right here, talking about the, um, the tweeter upgrade I made to my main speakers. Now, if you're not aware, I built the main speakers that I have in this room about two years ago, and I've been using them ever since. And originally when I built them, they were connected to a mini DSP. There were, it was a digital crossover for them. Eventually what I got around to doing, which is what I wanted to do, was to build a multi-channel amp that had crossovers built in so that I had a 10-channel amplifier that I built myself, designed and built myself. And before the signal gets amplified, it's sent through a, a multi-channel crossover that would feed the individual drivers on these speakers. So... That's what I was dealing with up until, I don't know, around seven or eight months ago when I decided that, okay, well, I talked about this in, in previous videos, but one of my regrettable issues, preventable issues, is that I've got hearing loss. And it's from years of construction without wearing any hearing protection. And that's what makes it pre preventable. I mean, I could have... If I had been smarter when I was, like, I thought I was smart, okay? But you know, when you're young, you're bulletproof, you know, nothing bad is going to happen to you. You're invincible. You're going to live forever, all this stuff. Well, <laughs> that was a big mistake on my part, not protecting my hearing. Anyway, to get to the point of why tweeter upgrade, what I did was I added a pair of compression drivers to this room that would boost the high frequency, the stuff that I really can't hear that well without hearing aids. And that made it so that I didn't have to wear my hearing aids while using the system down here. And it wasn't perfect. I'm not going to say that it is, but it's, it's a lot more convenient than wearing the hearing aids, which was the point. And I've been doing that for the past seven months. Like I said, I built those freestanding tweeters and I started using those and I got rid of wearing my hearing aids. I'm not wearing them right now, for instance. I'd never wear them down here. And it's funny because when I turn on the system and I'm listening for an hour or so, or I'm watching shows or watching movies, everything sounds like I'm wearing hearing aids. <laughs> and when I... You know, if I happen to walk out and I happen to stumble or something and say something, you know, like, damn it, I tripped. It's, I, I half sound deaf because I'm so used to hearing everything so clearly in here. Without my hearing aids, it's almost like I'm wearing them. You know, I fool myself. So to get started on this, the first thing that I did was I took out the existing tweeters. To get ready to do this, I designed and 3D printed an adapter that will marry my outer horn flare, the one made from walnut, with the compression driver. And what this mainly does is it matches the throat diameter of the compression driver with the diameter of the horn flare on the outside. And it has the same hole pattern as the tweeter that I just took off. So it screws right into the same holes that the tweeter was screwed into. And then I didn't have any M6 bolts of the right size, so I 3D printed them. And to make it easier for me to turn that, I made this little knob that fits on over the hex head. And you might be wondering, is a 3D printed part like that strong enough to stand up to the weight? And it's been like this for six months, so I consider that a fair test. There's been no sag. 
Another 3D printed part is this bracket that I made that fits over the mid-range driver. And I had to get creative with how I was going to fasten that. These clips clamp on and screw into the bracket. And the reason for this bracket is to remount that original tweeter, but have it so that it's firing backwards. I said before that these open baffle speakers are not true dipole because they don't have the tweeter firing backwards. And this modification fixes that. Now to do this, I need to reverse the wiring on the tweeter. And I had to do that anyway, because I had to disconnect the wires to get it into that hole. And as you can see, it just screws in place and is nice and solid. I didn't change anything about the way the original tweeters are connected other than reversing the polarity on the wires. They still go back to the 10 channel amp where they're being fed from the crossover that I built and designed for this speaker. The super tweeter, so-called, that I put in in its place, the compression driver, is driven by another separate amplifier, the one that I made you know, six months ago with a 3D printed case as an experiment to see how it would hold up. And I'm glad to say that it has held up quite well. And that is fed from the mini DSP, which I've reestablished just to uh, send a signal to those super tweeters so that I can tailor it to my hearing. I guess I should mention that yellow fin thing that's in the center of the um, horn in the thumbnail for this video. And that's um, one of several phase plug experiments that I did just to test to see what the, re the response would be. When I set this up, I, you know, I did some equalization with the mini DSP to make it as smooth and flat as possible. But then I got to thinking that maybe, you know, what it, what it needs, it wasn't that bad to begin with. Okay. Let me point that out. And it didn't sound bad at all. Okay. But I thought that maybe I could rig up some kind of a phase plug. And I went through several, like I said, and all of them without exception degraded the, um, the signal and I abandoned it. I mean, it looks cool. And that's the reason why it's the thumbnail for this video but it didn't do anything good. All right, now that I have that out of the way, I'm going to talk briefly about why I stepped away from audio at that time, six months ago. And primarily it was kind of a burnout situation where I was just a little bit worn out from it. And I have to admit that some of that is due to the futility of... Uh, talking about this subject with a lot of people that are deep into it. They, they act like it's a, um, it's a, um, life and death situation and of utmost importance that everything be the way that they think it should be. And the way that they think it should be, uh, for the most part is what, like, I'm not, I'm not, like, I'm not detecting very much original thought in the, especially in the comments that I get on the videos. And this is not a put down, okay? Original thought is fairly rare, all right? So, like, what I'm saying here is that I'm, I'm getting a lot of, of, um, repeated stuff, stuff that's parroted, okay? They heard it somewhere else and they just repeat it. And they, I'm willing to bet that 99.9% .9 of them that say these things that, you know, have these definite opinions about things have never verified for themselves whether they're true or not. And that, I mean, that is not, of course, that is not uh, just something you find in audio. You find that in everything, you know, throughout life. 
right? People, it's like I said before in another video, if they care about something, they have to have an opinion about it. They have to have, you know, a solid opinion about it. And they get upset if they hear something that contradicts that or challenges that in a way that they would not if it was another subject that they're not interested in. So I found that to be a little bit, uh, I don't know, I can't say depressing because it's not depressing. It's, it's just, it just seems futile to talk about things. And the other thing is that people half listen to what you're saying anyway. Um, I said before about posting videos on YouTube or anywhere on social media in order to get eyeballs on the, on the, on the, uh, the video or a post or whatever it is, you need to make it so that it's um, a little bit clickbaity. Okay, you need to trick people into clicking on the video. And this is a lot of what they, instead of listening to what you say in the video or, or reacting to the content of the video, they're reacting to the title, they're reacting to the, to the thumbnail, mostly the title. They read something and they say, oh, let's get the backup about that, right? And because they're so deeply invested in the topic, and they have to have very solid opinions about it. They have to have definite yes, no answers on everything. They jump in and they immediately start to comment on the title of the video when the title is just there for hype. The content of the video is the video itself, not the title or the thumbnail. Very much like this video right here. I kind of trick people into clicking on it by putting that, leaving that yellow plug in the center and they'll say, what the heck is that? I need to find out what that is. Okay, I've been doing this for a very long time, so I know how to manipulate the whole thing. And that's exactly what you have to do to be successful on here. Unfortunately, people don't seem to realize that and they get upset or they, like I said, they just react to what they see or what they read in the title. As usual, I probably have a bit more to say about this, but I can't really think of it right now. So I'll write it in the video description and I'll also copy that to my first post as usual, like I almost always do on these videos. I copy what I write in the description to my first post and I pin it to the top so you can read it there. And I suggest you do on all my videos that I post on this channel. I do exactly the same thing. You know, I put more information, more relevant information, not link, links that you can click on to go sell your products or anything like that. That's something else I don't do here is I don't, I'm not shilling products for stuff. And that's another problem with this topic is how many people are only interested in what product to buy and which is the best one of this and that and the other thing. And so you're up against this as well. And this is kind of sickening in my opinion, because like I've said many times before, there's very little difference between all of the products you can find in a certain price range and nobody is making bad stuff these days. Certainly not stuff that you'd want to, you know, go out of your way to avoid or have to watch hours of YouTube to figure out which is the best one, which is the best one of these $500 speakers that you want to buy. They're all the same, basically. And like I said many times before, once you get them set up properly in your room, you know, they're going to sound okay to you anyway. They're going to sound just the same as any others because the biggest factor, as I've said many times before as well, the biggest factor in how things sound is the room itself. You want to fix something, you want to do some research to improve things, you want to get the most out of your sound system, improve your room. That's not changed.